Hello and welcome to this video tutorial on setting up a render in Rhino 7. This video tutorial will go through the steps of setting up a viewport, adjusting the angle of the view and the zoom of that view to best capture the image we're trying to make and also setting up a simple sun lighting settings and your render settings within Rhino 7. Now we're going to start by setting up the angle of our camera for this view. And for the view I want to set my camera up from the bottom of this swimming pool at the bottom of the screen here, looking up at the top of these two structures. Now it's important when doing any visualisations of buildings that we set up our camera from a person's eye height. The reason for this is that once we set it up at an eye height level, all the buildings and structures will look in proportion within that view. So to do this, I usually just make a box and essentially just draw the box out and make this the same height as a person, which is 1.7 meters for an average person's height. This will act as our dummy essentially and we can use this as a way of setting the camera to match that person's height so our camera is at eye level. Now the second important thing is to make sure the camera is looking perfectly horizontal in the view. This way all our buildings and geometry won't be warped by perspective and will have perfect vertical straight lines. So to do that, I usually just make a copy of this initial box. And once we've made that copy, we're then going to move that slightly off the geometry and create a target for our first box to look at. So I'm just going to use the gumball and just using the kind of X and Y axis here I'm just going to move this horizontally so it's at exactly the same vertical level as my initial box, but we've moved it horizontally in the direction that I want my camera to be looking in. And I want my camera to essentially look at this building at the far kind of background of the view. So these two boxes basically telling me where I want my camera to be placed and where I want my camera to be looking. Now once I've set those up, we can then go to view, set camera, and place camera and target. And this tool allows us to place the camera on the top of our first box and then place the target of that camera on the top of our second box. And this will give us the direction within which our camera is looking. So once I click this place on the top of the second box, my view will then snap to where that camera is. And you can see now we've got our camera set up at eye level with a nice kind of vertical lines because our camera is set perfectly horizontal all our verticals in our view are going straight up and down and there's no warping on there so that's the initial view set up and once you've got this set we can hide off our original box object now it might be that you're getting something like I am here where the top of this building is slightly being cropped off and you want to adjust that so in order to then tweak the view, we can go into the camera lens length setting here. And what this would do is it will widen or tighten up the angle of the view. If I lower that value, it will make the view wider and we will see more objects in the scene, but it will also add this quite kind of strong sort of warping effect to the edges of the image. So essentially I wouldn't usually go below 30 degrees. And if you go a higher angle there, it obviously zooms in but the image is a lot flatter, there's a lot less warping. So it's just a case of sort of finding a good value in between there. And I think for this I'm going to set it to around kind of 31, 32. And then I'm going to use the zoom dynamic tool up here just to sort of pull back slightly on the image until we get a kind of good zoom view. And if you sort of pan into your original dummy box we can hide that as well so we lose it and you might need to use the pan tool just to pan up slightly we don't want to go too high because that will kind of ruin our eye level effect so it's a case of just kind of adjusting the lens length adjusting the view until you get the kind of top of the building in frame now the thing with this is we can always crop in our view afterwards so it's good to get your view slightly wider than what you need and then we can crop it back afterwards in Photoshop when we go through and post-produce our image. So I might even go a bit lower to a 29 for instance on this just so we can get the top of that building in and then we can crop that back. I think for now let's keep it at 30 because I think that's looking nice. And I'll just slightly pan it up. And I think we're kind of about there so I'm quite happy with that view now. 
So what we can do now is we can then move on to setting up the lighting. Now before I do this, I've got my view and I want to save this view out. So in case I sort of accidentally move the camera or tweak the angle, I can keep this view locked in. In order to do that, we can go to view, set view and named views here. And under the named views, we can save our view we found. And I'm just going to save this as eye level there. What this will mean is it will save out in our named views and if I accidentally kind of pan around in my scene and lose that view, I can just double click on that eye level view and it will snap back to that view for me. So it's really useful and important that you save your views out when you get them. That way you can go back to them if needs be or if you lose that view. So the next step is setting up the lighting and for this scene we're going to go to render and render properties to set the lighting up in the scene. Now I'm going to be using Rhino Render and Rhino 7 has slightly updated their render engine from its Rhino 6 version and the Rhino 6 version can be found under this legacy Rhino Render but for now we're going to be using the new updated version of Rhino Render which has slightly better lighting qualities and different material qualities as well which we'll go through in a later video. Now for this, for the dimension and the resolution and quality we're going to be using just the viewport dimension for now just I've set this kind of custom one up to match the viewport aspect ratio which is this kind of one to two aspect ratio and we're going to keep it at quite a low size we're just doing it at a thousand pixels wide at the moment this is because I'm currently testing out the render and we don't want a kind of final production quality at this stage because I just want to be testing it to make sure it's coming out at the right kind of lighting qualities we're looking for when I get around to rendering the final image I would probably do it anywhere sort of over 2000 pixels to get a high quality image and these numbers here this 640 by 480 refers to the amount of pixels in that image so at the moment I'm a thousand pixels wide by 501 pixels high so for now we're just going to keep it to a thousand pixels wide at the maximum because it's a draft quality and we just want to be using it to test out the lighting in the scene um, and I'm going to keep the quality on draft for now because it's still sort of in a test bed scenario. For the backdrop, we're just going to keep a solid color for now. And we're just going to scroll down to the lighting panel here. And we're just going to turn off the skylight at this stage. I just want to set the sun up first so we can get some good sun settings in the scene. And then later on, we'll be working in some environmental lights to give a more kind of overall lighting effect to the model. So for now, we're just going to go and make sure the sun is ticked and under sun settings, we're going to tick it on manual controls and we're just going to set the sun to a 45-ish degree altitude and let's just set it coming from the south for now. So what we'll do is once that's set and we'll hit OK and hit OK there, is we can do a quick preview of the scene to see how the sun is coming up in that scene. And to do that, I'm going to go to render and render preview. And this will just load up a preview of this render and it should be relatively quick depending on the complexity of your scene. So that render is now just loading up so we'll just wait it for it to load the mesh in and see the result there. So there you can see my basic lighting set up in the scene. It's still quite bleached out at the moment and that's because my sunlight seems to be coming from directly behind the camera so we're not getting much contrast on my geometry here and it's looking quite faded and sort of bleached out. And I also think my kind of view is a little bit pulled back. I sort of want to zoom in a bit. So doing these previews is really important because we can really get a sense of how the image is coming out. So I'm going to close this down and we'll just go back and adjust our view slightly. So let's pan the view in a little bit just so we're not as far back in the scene. Just using that zoom tool again. And I'm just going to kind of pan it up slightly as well. And I think as well I'm going to rotate it slightly to the right so we lose some of this on the left hand side because I don't think it's kind of helping the scene there. A little bit back. A lot of time you'll be tweaking the kind of image back and forth through this render process so don't worry if it's not perfect at the first time you'll constantly be refining it through this process. And then I'm also going to go back to the render properties and just tweak that lighting again. 
I want slightly longer shadows in the scene and I want a little bit more contrast on the geometry. So I'm going to just change the angle just to a southwesterly angle and just lower the altitude to a kind of 26 there, I think should be good. And with that set, I'm going to go back to OK and then we'll do one more render preview to see how that's now looking. And it might take a few times of going back and forth, just tweaking the lighting slightly, tweaking the angle of your view, just to kind of get different sort of um, lighting scenarios and kind of different camera angle until it looks right. So the preview is now just loading up. So we'll just let that load and we'll have a look at the results now. So now you can see we've got a nice kind of contrast on our building. Just by turning that sun around slightly, it's hitting the face on this kind of left hand side and causing a shadow on the right and we've got this nice long shadow because I've set the sun a bit lower in the sky. So this is working a lot better than my previous view so I think I'm going to stick with this lighting. I'm quite happy with that now. And like I said before it's probably a little bit long on the left and right but we can always crop it in in Photoshop at a later stage so it's always good to give yourself a bit more room on these images so you can crop in later. Now that's the end of this video tutorial, just going through simple view setup and lighting setup. In the next video we'll be setting up some environmental lighting to give more colour and ambience to this view because currently we're very sort of grayscale black and white in this render and I want to add a bit more environmental lighting so the light's got a bit of a bluish quality from the sky and is giving more of a kind of overall lighting to the scene. So thank you for watching and please tune in for the next video where we'll follow on from this session on Rhino Render in Rhino 7. Thank you.